So welcome to the August 24th meeting of the Comprehensive Committee. And I am going to start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. If everybody would stand up. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would ask everybody to identify themselves, and we'll start with Mr. Justice, and we'll go right around the uh, table here. Anything else besides my name? That's it. Okay. Michael Justice, Town of Fishkill. Teresa Lundgren. John Foreman, member of the Fishkill Town Board. Jonathan Cantor, chair of the Town of Fishkill Planning Board. Liz Axelson, planning consultant to the Town of Fishkill Comprehensive Plan Update Committee. Megan Lucicero, Drake Loeb, attorneys for the committee. Fred Cantor, member of this committee and also member of the planning board. Eddie Colon, member of this committee. And Donald Pristula, also member of the committee. And I'm going to officially turn this move over to Elizabeth. Okay, and just so the committee knows there were a few people that couldn't make it, I'm not gonna list their names, but they did communicate. So uh, that was the main thing. So, um, I've, I've given the committee a few things to look at and hopefully we can discuss tonight and hopefully I will leave here with a lot of red pen notes because I'm looking for your feedback on everything. Um, most of what I've prepared um, is based on input from the prior committee meetings. So, so for example, uh, the biggest chunk I gave you is um, what I'm going to call the uh, Comprehensive Plan Update or CPU um, outline and text because there's now more text. It's getting filled in. And every time we've discussed this, I've made notes. And what I've tried to do is go back and, um, and add things. So um, I'll do a quick walkthrough, and then I'm looking for input. So the introduction and the vision really haven't changed since, although I did find some notes where I do need to change those. Um, but because I'm looking for input on, on the section, let's see, the first section is introduction, second is vision. Later we'll add a summary of the comprehensive plan update process and the survey results. But the big hunk that I really want the board to focus on now, or the committee to work on now, is goals, objectives, and strategies which starts on page two and goes on all the way through um, page 19. Um, so, so recently, um, I tried to emphasize a little bit more about sidewalks, pedestrians. Um, so the first um, A1 is just about traffic congestion and noting some of the places in town that are the worst intersections and lengths of road. That's section A1. And then objective two is to pursue the addition of sidewalks. And I won't read that text. Um, but going on to page three, uh, what I did was I looked at a couple different mapping platforms, um, online mapping platforms. And I was lucky to find um, Dutchess County Transportation Council has a moving Dutchess forward mapping platform and you can turn layers on and off and luckily they had sidewalks which was a blessing because if you're looking at just aerial photography it's a little hard to track sidewalks so they've already put it down and so I looked at the intersections and, and lengths of street that were of concern and what you'll see on page three is a description, a very specific description of where sidewalks are needed. And I know that early in this process, I had said that um, I believe the more specific you can be about what you want, um, it makes it um, not easier, but more pointed to implement the plan that ultimately the town board would adopt. So I tried to be very specific, it may sound a little technical, the other aspect of, of being very specific about where sidewalks are needed is that if the town decides they need to seek any kind of funding um, to construct or design the sidewalks in these areas, this adopted very specific description gives 
the town a lot of power because they've really thought it out. So that being said, I want you to look through those at some point and let me know if you think it's overdone. Is it too much sidewalks? Um, am I missing a side street? So I tried to follow main routes and I also tried to observe where are there neighborhoods and business areas that could be connected? Um, where are there business areas that people are probably already walking to, but they're either walking in the shoulder of the road, which is dangerous, or just inside the curb and making a dirt path, which is also dangerous because you could trip over the curb. It's un uneven for people to have trouble walking. So have a look at those and give me some feedback. Um, and then the other, let's see. There are you know, more sections um, on page four that also have to do with um, improvements for safety and convenience of pedestrians. So these are other items. Um, and then last time, uh, Jonathan made a really great observation. There were a whole bunch of objectives where I was describing the beacon line in several items and kind of repeating. And so I tried to merge those together. So item five at the bottom of page four is that merger of all, all the things that um, would support and be supported by uh, the Beacon Line concept yeah. um, to try to show some of the connections. And then let's see, moving on. Um, I also want to just note that in just about every section, we're going to have photos. So I'm just inserting that in there. My goal with the whole idea of putting in photos is let's get the text to a happy place for the committee that you're nearly satisfied. And then I'll reformat this and, and there will be room for pictures all over the place. Um, so good design in the built environment. Um, I'm just gonna kind of skip. Basically from the bottom of page eight through almost through page 10, it's, it's a kind of uh, a reiteration of the goals that were in the 2009 plan and all the different things that the town did mm -hmm. since the 2009 plan was adopted to add code changes. And, and that's fine. The issue is that they're all great standards. They're all for better design but it also lays the weight of how development moves on the, on the shoulders of the planning board, which is fine because that's an important mechanism. And, and the code, the way it is now, I think really gives the planning board a lot of what they need to try to have better design with the exception of the pushback. Um, and we get that. <laughs> and you, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. So then the front of this section, um, I reformatted. So going back to page seven, um, B, the goal is promote good design of the built environment. And the first objective has to do with better design. But what I did in the first header paragraph is reiterate the smart growth principles that were in the 2009 plan, because they, those are worth repeating, I think. And then everything falls from there. Um, so you have zoning provisions about mixed use and compact development. Um, but the issue that the committee has expressed is the lack of wastewater facilities, um, sewer and wastewater facilities. So I wrote um, some items about that. Um, I don't, I did speak to one of our engineers today. I'm not convinced that even if stormwater was taken out of the shared uh, wastewater from sewer and stormwater system, it wouldn't necessarily add enough capacity to be able to allow the town to do any development. So then the idea is, well, how do we create wastewater uh, treatment capacity in the community? And um, so I've listed some possibilities for pursuing connections with existing sewer and wastewater systems. So you can let me know what you think of those. Um, I can't say that I know off the top of my head what has been tried. I'm aware of Tri-Municipal because I worked on that in, in my 
20s, early 30s. Um, but I don't know that even Tri Municipal at this point has capacity. That's already three um, communities. So, so those are some, some concepts. And the last one, and I'm looking at the bottom of page seven, is the possibility of a vacant site or a site available for redevelopment that would accommodate wastewater treatment system. The, the beauty of creating wastewater, central wastewater capacity in the town is it kind of dovetails with the hard edge of the aquifer law that was adopted, which basically says, well, if you're in, if you're in uh, sewer wastewater treatment system, you're good. But if you're not, if you're building uh, well and septic, then your density um, gets, gets diluted, basically. You have to have a nearly three acre lot. So that's another possibility. Is, is there a vacant site left? But I know that, you know, to some degree, there's a perceived shortage, at least, of development sites. But there's also redevelopment sites. Um, and then objective two at the <coughs> bottom of page seven examine the town of Fishkill's landscape to identify larger parcels of vacant land for which may be available for development or redevelopment. And I just say it right there, this is a placeholder for sites parcels under examination by CPU committee member Jonathan Cantor. Um, and then I did a section to follow that about underutilized properties on page eight. And again, some of this is from what the committee has expressed already. And I'm trying to think the next. Do we have the capacity to suggest a location for a sewer plant? It could be explored, I would imagine. It, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with identifying a possible site. You know, somebody may come to the hearing and say, oh, that's my piece of land and I won't let you do it, but well, not or, that they're, or an area. Not that they're cheap to build, but just a step further, Fred, could there be more than one location based on the size yeah. and not as one Could you big just large introduce yourself? oh sorry james walker cpu <laughs> <laughs> i'm from another town the new one right? yeah the new one exactly <laughs> so to um just you know piggyback on that and then you're talking about matawan has they have something there age is it easier to rehab or just scrap and go new but i already know the answer to that one but just throw it out there just for sake of debate I wondered we, about that. If they they must have a system. They do, but it's you know, Matawan their eighteen hundreds, I mean, you know, some of the sewers in Newburgh uh, you know, they were back in the eighteen hundreds, eighteen seventy, so right. don't you know, discount that fact. Of course not. No. Before we even go that far, is there actually a quantifiable need for what a extension or a new sewer treatment facility would look like? And I, when I say that, I mean, do we have a, a, a recognized deficit, hey, for us to be able to develop, we need to have the capacity to do X number of gallons a day? Because the size of the facility that you propose to build in any context would have a, a finite function in, of output in terms of how much water it could treat in a given period of time. And that, in turn, would determine what adjustments we'd be looking at in terms of what's developable or not developable. And when I say we, I don't even mean the, you know, this board or this committee as much as the, the community at large when making decisions about, you know, zoning or use. If we can't recognize or identify exactly what the need is, we're short 100,000 gallons a day, 200,000, whatever the number is, to not be able to identify or quantify what that need is any ideas about putting a, a plant somewhere would have to be reflective of not only where the deficit is, but how much it is in order to, to make a, a logical decision as to where it should go. Yep. So while, I mean, while we talk anecdotally about there being this, I don't like you, you mentioned almost kind of like, uh, not mockingly, but the, the, there's this perception that there is a deficit. Is there in fact a deficit? If so, how much is the deficit? The idea being that if we're looking to grow as a community and this is a, an encumbrance to doing that. We should probably have more information as to how, you know, where, what that encumbrance is before we start saying, okay, yeah, we can take that disused parcel if it has no connection, it has no discharge point, 
We, there's no electricity there. You know, like, for, before we even start to look at the environmental issues, I think we need to get a better grip as to what this actual deficit is and how it affects us. I think what you just stated is probably a good commentary to include in the plan, basically, that we don't know at this point. We don't have the data yet. But, um, you know, recommending that the town board, I'm sure, has more information than this committee does. I'm sure that comes up at town board meetings sometimes. But, um, you know, recommending something like um, that the town board um, investigate the current sewer and water capacities and figure out where there are uh, problems with the systems. And it's probably already been recorded in some place, but it's not in our plan. And that might help to have something summarized in the plan. I'll go one step further. Um, maybe we could have Mike Tremper from Camo either contact Elizabeth directly to get whatever questions that you are forecasting that, that, that may be coming up or actually ask him to join us for our first meeting in mm -hmm. September. Yeah. Because I, I, I could ask him. I mean, he lives up in Rhinebeck, but if I give him enough notice, I think he would. What's his uh, name, Mike? Tremper. Tremper. Um, That's a good idea. And, uh, and, and, you know, mm -hmm. I might have to buy him dinner, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I'll get him here for our meeting, and it would, he's a wealth of information. Yes, that good. is fact. So would you like me to try and do that for that the September would be 14th great. meeting? That would be yeah. great. Okay. Because and he'll take care of all the well, he'll take care of all the water and all the septic. You know, everything is connected. Yeah, and I have the impression, um, and again, it's an impression from committee commentary. <clears throat> Where we came up with the issue for um, a lack of sewer was in a discussion about the possibility of doing either mixed use development or trying to do some more different types of residential development for whatever yeah. need there is in the community, which I'm sure there's plenty of need for all you know, income levels. But that the, my understanding, at least from yes. the discussion, was that the big limiting factor was that. So it is, yeah, it's kind of a perception. We don't really have a number, and that would yeah, be helpful we, to have. We, we just knew that things were at capacity, and it's commingled with the village. But what my, um, well, you've pointed out is that we need to quantify, we need to understand what that gap is. And for that matter, is it scalable? On time, mm -hmm. you know, so it's a great point. Just to expound on that for a second, part, you'll have to pardon my ignorance. I haven't lived in Fishkill for a tremendously long time. Are all, can you, I know it's a number of sewer districts. Are all of the sewer districts combined for stormwater and sewage, or is it, uh, you know, is or some stormwater plus sewage, some are storm, you know, some are combined? Like, is it? I'm going to tell you, he can answer the question better than we can. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, I, because I'm not, I'm not looking for uh, an in inventory of what we have yeah. as much as it is, is the general, I guess, kind of yeah. operation of these systems, combined systems. Or is it a hodgepodge of some separate, some combined? From what I understand from our civil engineers, because the, they work in Fishkill and Wappinger and other communities, um, that a lot of the systems are older. Mm -hmm. And so they were constructed to handle um, stormwater flows plus um, wastewater, treated wastewater flow. Gotcha. Oh, no, wastewater flow. It all goes into the same place and what happens, and of course I'm not an engineer, but I can more or less explain this, um, is that you have a large flow going into a sewage treatment plant that's designed to treat sewage, um, but it's receiving, one, a much larger volume of water with all the waste than if it was just coming from sewage, from flushing the toilet. Yeah. And also that there are pollutants coming from roads from the stormwater yes. that are not either not getting treated by what the sewage treatment plant is designed for hmm. or they're gumming up the works yeah. and making it more difficult to treat. And then you have surges which cause outflows of untreated storm and uh, wastewater. So that, that's part of the problem. In, and the expense of retrofitting, I mean, that, that could be an objective, of retrofitting systems to start to eliminate stormwater from 
being part of that flow. So that, that could be another objective that might help. Some of our piping is not sufficient to carry everything right now. So we have moratorium on certain areas. Even though the sewer plant could take care of it, the, 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 getting the, it to the, the sewer, sewer plant, plant yes. is the problem. Understood. Thank you. So Elizabeth, yeah. if, um, what I'll do is I'll put Mike in touch with you. Are you in touch with Mike? Okay. You guys can. Give him my cell phone number. Yep. You guys can figure out the questions you want to ask him. He can mm -hmm. lay out a whole bunch of groundwork for you, and then ask him to come and make a presentation okay. in front of in front of everybody. Okay. Is that right? That'd be great. Good. Okay. I think the other thing I'll do from the sort of I don't know if it's the front end or the back end is um, I can't remember was it was it you that sent me the housing? Yeah. Okay. There are a couple housing studies from the county now and to try to get some sense of what I don't know if they've allocated it like they did down in Westchester to find out what is the number and at least have a sense of what is the need at least from um, an affordable standpoint and then I think you can try to extrapolate what is the need from just the rest of the spectrum of folks looking to have a home so yep Liz I have some questions on your what you sent us Please. I did a little bit of stuff ahead of time. Just, and I'm glad you brought this because I had it on the computer. Um, what is Route 52B? Oh, <laughs> it's where. Uh, I lived here a long time. Route 52, <laughs> that's Just the way it's labeled. Huh? It's where Route 52 goes underneath 84 and then continues through Beacon, I think. Business no, I business. can hear. Right. That's that how it's labeled. Yes, yeah, correct. That, that is the G business correct. 52? Yeah. Yes. Because oh, okay. the, actually the 52B business. goes on to 84 and continues across the river. So the not yes. 52 the actual 52 yeah. goes across the river. That's a shared route. That's I-84 okay, and 52. Gotcha. Because it goes all the way through yeah, Orange okay. County right. and wanna, back so in Ulster County and Sullivan. Yes. yes. It's 52 yeah. business, so it's trying to get the trucks yep. off. 52. Right. Business district. No, Actually, you know is this, is this 52B right out here? Technically, yes, it is. Yeah, that's right. From yeah. the 84 intersection all the way yep. to the end of 9D where the Washington statue is, that's 52 yep. business. So, so that's what the B stands for. Okay. Um, Queen B. <laughs> so now you know. Just, just, just some things for you to, for the, you know about. But Hamburg is really New Hamburg. Mm. Hamburg is really New Hamburg? New Hamburg yes. Wait, where are you? Tell me your... Um, you're on number four on the very beginning on the uh, on page. Yeah, yeah. I'll just write it on the front and find it. Mm -hmm. How about that? Hamburg is New Hamburg. Oh, you referenced it. Uh, it's, this is all in the beginning. Number one, two, three. Number four objective. I think, yes, yeah, number four objective on page four. Beacon and Hamburg. Yeah. Because Hamburg is in Germany. <laughs> There's also a Hamburg out in western New York. Uh, yes, yes, there is. There is. That's right. New Hamburg. Yeah. Um, Good. Yeah. Go for it. And that was also the same one that had the 52B. Um, you okay I, with the 52B? Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I was also, you know, as I was speaking earlier with the, the, the rest of the people, but I'm also looking, going back to some of the things we talked about in um, the old plan, is to have some sort of bypass. And we talked about some bypass roads. And I don't bypass see- Bypass roads? Yeah, you know, bypass. <laughs> Basically bypassing the village. Mm -hmm. Somehow to get around the village. And there are two possibilities. One of them is expensive, and one of them is relatively inexpensive, but they have to be done and if, if you want to <laughs> bypass. All right? And one of them is the Merritt Road Blodgett Bypass. Where I'm saying there should be sidewalks, that area? Well, this goes, you know, from the, uh, the you know, um, Walmarts, you know, mm -hmm. through Walmart. Yeah through that road, and then it can cross the Fishkill Creek with a bridge and come out on Blodgett Road, which is in the village of Fishkill. Mm -hmm. And there is a light there right now, and that's, if anybody doesn't know that CVS, where CVS is. 
and that was an original plan going back 30 years. So you're mm -hmm. starting from Merritt and kind of heading south? West. South or west? You're going okay. west. Yeah, west and north. West, west. west is really where you're heading. Yeah, northwest. Yeah. Open Creek. All right, I'll tell you what. How about we look at one of the maps? Yeah, yeah. Fred, are you going to be breaching that? That would really help me. What? Fairly fast. <laughs> 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 swimming hole? Are you going to be breaching that? No. Is hey. there a swimming hole? It was, look, it was on the plane. You knew it was calling back in the day. Oh, you full information, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, this isn't what I want. This is coming up in a pretty good Before my group is back 30 years. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, you just describe it to me. Give me a, I'm, a I'm starting from no. where? You're starting <laughs> they have no clothes on. Merritt Road. Got it. All right, Merritt Road basically starts on it's Route 52. Okay. All right, goes through that whole Merritt subdivision. Yeah. Little Brothers subdivision. Yep comes out on Route 9, goes into the Walmart Plaza, whatever you want to call it. There's more than that. We have a lot more in there than Walmart. Sam's. Yes. And Sam's, all right? And then there is, um, you have to cross the Fishkill Creek. Yeah, just follow it to the end. There's a cul-de-sac yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'd have to cross the creek and then go across the creek and come out on Blodgett Road, Road in the village of Fishkill, where CVS no is, and the light. And that would bypass the Jackson Road, Route 52, and going all the traffic going right through the, the hamlet of the village of Fishkill, <laughs> of where we have all our restaurants and everything. It would bypass Jackson Road. Right. Yeah. And it was on the plan. When I was here, when I started in 71, that was on the. Oh my God. A dream, all right? And then just never went through itself. And, there was and no as course. like a low, like just a two lane road, maybe the sidewalk. It's a, two, it's, a two, it's a two lane road, and, uh, you know, but again. Would that be suffice? Huh? Would that two lane road be suffice? I, I think, I, well, I don't see any. But we, don't, we only have two lane road on all of, all of that Merritt Boulevard. Is it intended to be a bypass so that people don't have to be in the middle of traffic on 9 yeah. and, and 52 and, and, and it would also like that? have people coming from um, 52 coming east there, like 10 years to go ago. into mm -hmm. the Merritt Boulevard mm -hmm. if they're not, you know, anybody off that way. So people just want to get in there and go shopping? Uh, well, and whatever. You know, it's again, mm -hmm. but it was, a, it was a planned bypass. Okay. And the other one I'd like to bring up. Is it in the 2009? Huh? Is it in the well, 2009 plan, or it's just a different, separate? I could I mention that. Remember, it was in the last plan, was it? There's a whole section about that in the 2009 plan okay. huh. on page nine, which basically, um, to sum it up, there was a lot of research done. Um, it was the 1989 town of Fishkill plan that recommended that Route 52 bypass, but all the research that went on since then and also in the Dutchess County um, Transportation Council um, work that that's where the funding for road projects like that get funded basically indicated that the western leg of the Route 52 bypass is no longer considered to be a viable project and so that was taken out of the Transportation Improvement Plan um, and so the 2009 Town of Fishkill Comprehensive Plan basically came to the conclusion that that western leg, which I think is pretty much what you're describing of the bypass, which is mainly in the Town of Fishkill portion, um, would be the, the concept of that would be abandoned. So that's what's in the 2009 plan. Yeah. We also had the village opposing it, but that was a political decision. So anyway, that's <laughs> the history of yeah. the bypass and why it has never happened up to this point and why I think we'd have to be very careful about recommending something like that again at this point after all the is research it, and thinking that went into it. Is there the, that bypass, is it encompassed inside the village? It, I think it, it's both. It encompasses both. Yeah. It is both? Yeah, because so, Blodgett Road is the border there. It's the border. Correct. Yeah, it's like a wraparound road, isn't it? Sort of. Hmm? Isn't 
Blodgett kind of a wraparound road? No, Blodgett no. Road goes in, into the train tracks. Yeah. And what we're talking about for our... Uh, anyway, that's history. <laughs> Why was it considered not viable at that point? I, I, I can't answer that one. Maybe uh, John could. Well, isn't um, Route 84 technically a bypass? I mean, you can get on 84 near Merritt, get off on Fishkill 52 and bypass mm -hmm. the whole village. I mean, if I was, I can see why they would say building another road and a bridge and all that is not feasible. I've got another one already there. Well, this would be more for local traffic and pulling highway. <clears throat> yes, yes, it would avoid highway. That would be nice, I agree. Well, one of the things we're trying to do is the biggest problem, everybody, if you ask anybody, what's your main problem with fish kill? Traffic. Traffic. Okay, so we can say, everybody, go around. Okay. And known people are not going to go around. All right? So let's try to come up with a solution well, you can make to eliminate that, some of that traffic. You can make that a non-commercial, too. Just absolutely. Just make it so. Well, you have the traffic come from the north and the south on Route Nine, and then barreling onto Fifty Two. So, if part a portion of that could be deviated off into Merritt Boulevard to mitigate that congestion right on Fifty Two in the village. Right. Yeah. It's, it's well worth taking a look at. Yeah. Yes. I just I was just, that's why I asked the question about the village part and isn't would they not be a partner in trying to make this thing happen? Well. Jonathan, why was it considered non-viable? I missed that. Well, I can tell you what the plan said, which <laughs> you can all look at, which we probably all should have been looking at right along. But um, so the western leg of the Route 52 bypass is no longer considered to be a viable project. This is um, near the top of page nine. Wetlands, wetland adjacent areas, archaeological yeah. concerns, in parens, the proposed area for the western leg is in an archaeological sensitive area, as well as the substantial costs associated with permitting and construction of a bridge over the Fishkill Creek have dealt a death blow to the proposal, as somebody stated in the plan, um, or the whole, that the committee at that time stated it that way. Um, so those were reasons among, I'm sure, others that were stated in the plan. Uh, this was part of a two-part study, one entitled the Fiscal Traffic Analysis and the other the Route 52 Alternatives Analysis. And the analysis focused on four questions. One, is such a connection feasible? Two, how and where would such a road connect? Three, would the road divert traffic from Route 52 in the village center? And four, does the connection have public support? And I think the majority of those questions were answered in a negative fashion. So I'm sure there's a lot more information than was summarized in the plan. Thank you. I do admit it has to go over wetlands, mm -hmm. which is the Fishkill Creek and the mm -hmm. ponds and everything else. But some of that's been corrected with drainage, but it's still back there. All right. The second spot I'd like to talk about is we have a subdivision called Round, Round Hill or Baxter Town Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have quite a few condos and apartments and co-ops. Is that a co-op? Town, no, no. Townhouse. townhouses. Townhouses. All right. And if you go to the top of it, um, what's the name of the road going in? Mount Road. Oh, you're, you're no, no, road. no. We're going to Ridge the, Road. What? Ridge. Ridge Road, and that's off Baxter Town Road, which is, and this is all in the town of Fishkill. Right. And if you go to the straight up to the top of it, there's a water tower, um, and you have a cul-de-sac that ends. And on the other side, there is the uh, Mowerbrook subdivision, all right? And there's a chain going across, separating the two, mm -hmm. which the fire department has for emergency services. Mm -hmm. But if you take that straight out, that comes out to um, Gearing Way, which yeah. is where yeah. the highway department is. Central Hudson. Yes. Right behind Central Hudson. Well, Central Hudson, where the town highway department is. 
And if you open that up, that <coughs> gate, Brilliant. you would eliminate a lot of traffic going through the village of the corners of Baxter Town and either, you want to call it Osborne Hill or Jackson Road mm -hmm. at that point, because that's where the names For change yeah. at, that, at that corner. And also coming out at Jackson Road and 52, where everybody is complaining of traffic. And that would bypass all of that and come out on Gearing Way, where there is a light right now. And if people wanted to bypass the village, they could do that and get right on 84 or go wherever they want to go and alleviate a big hunk of traffic potentially through the village, which is up, which is it. No, it's brilliant. Right. And you'd also be connecting, I think you're connecting neighborhoods. It's if already connected. Like, you right. can walk. But you, you're well, allowing you can, people you, to drive instead you, of just yes. yeah. and the road, walk or and, trespass. And, or and the road is, is existing now because the fire department would use it in case of an emergency. I mean, I'm not sure that, you know, whatever updating has to do because it's... Would, would this cut through the Baxter Town Woods, the wildlife management? I'm, I can't hear you. Would this cut through the Baxter Town Woods wildlife management area? Would, sure yes. Yeah, sure. yeah. The road well, going through there now. Where's that located? I don't know where that located. No, no, that, that's on the other side, close to 90. Kill. Oh, Stony Killer? No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. no, no, it's, it's, it's not that, it's, yeah. it's. You to to if you go where the road is. Half a mile in from. Yeah, Fred, but you have to go to, to Ron Hill. Who? Oh? You have to go to Ron Hill in order to get to Ron <laughs> But yeah, but the people who are going to, I'm not looking for people coming from Baxter Down Road. I'm looking for the people who are in that subdivision who now have to go down to Baxter Town Road, used to Jackson, go on 52, either way, all right? And if they're going to go east, it wouldn't save them anything. But if they're going to go west, it would. And if they're going to get on the 84, it would definitely save them. Agreed. Mm -hmm. I'm generally not the one to throw up bureaucracy, but if you look at that neighborhood off of Round Hill, off of Ridge Road, you know, it's essentially, to your point, all condominiums, townhouses. I'm sure they would have a lot to say if you turn that into a thoroughfare. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rightfully so, given the number of cars they're getting now versus the number of cars that you would get if that did turn into an active roadway connecting to 52 with Baxter Tower, which I, I'm, I'm just saying that I, on its merits, I think it's a great idea if it's only closed for fire department access, if it alleviates traffic, we probably should revisit it. However, as part of revisiting that, someone actually needs to go out there and count cars or, or otherwise research the matter to look at what the effects are going to be. So are you saying the traffic would go right through the middle of a condo complex? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, main, the, the main road. Uh, it's the, that's, it, my it's understanding the, is yeah, I don't the main go back road. there often, but that's the main oh, thoroughfare. the main road is... It's, no, it's the main road through the complex. Yes. It was made to be, it's a wide road, it was made to be handle a lot, a lot of traffic, but it, right now it ends in the cul-de-sac because yeah. you can't get through because of the, the gate. Uh, well, I mean, there could be ways of connecting. I mean, if it's all a residential area, there could be ways of allowing a connection, but adding maybe some, I don't know, speed humps or some kind of traffic calming type oh, features I mean, that would get people to slow down and look and act like it's a residential area and well, they should there's, slow there's down. also the thought of reverse if people know, want to come in and cut through in a sense they want to bypass and go to Wampagers or, or something like that. <coughs> Excuse me. and they're going to be coming through it could be even commercial traffic that could be blowing through there coming in the opposite direction yeah. uh, no what I'm saying is that you know that could be an impact we don't have to be weighed uh, yeah. look I agree we just the, the problem we run into and we go home. Everybody says, what are we going to do about the traffic? <coughs> and there's only certain things you can do about traffic. Oh, I agree. I'm, to, to be clear, I'm not dismissing the idea as much as it is. It's far more complex okay. socially than just removing the chain and adding some asphalt and acting as though nothing, nothing changed. Yeah. Look, I'm on the planning board. I understand that <laughs> in my backyard. Yeah. <laughs> Not trying to dissuade you at all. In fact, I think that that's actually kind of smart. I didn't realize it was, I didn't realize that there was a chain there for fire department access. 
I just figured it, two two separate developments that didn't didn't meet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I recommend anybody go out take a drive up. I, I think I'm going to have to now, but it's daylight. Yeah, go take a drive up. <laughs> the best time is Christmas Eve. <laughs> Uh, no. If anybody's familiar with that at all, <laughs> on Christmas Eve, it's, all the driveways have candles lit all the way through the neighborhood. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. I was just making up. No, 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 I get it. <laughs> anyway. um, Liz, can we, I'll go on to the next one, number five. Well, I think. Well, no, I was, I was just going to say, Liz was doing such a fine job of sort of giving us an overview of the whole thing, and then all of a sudden now we're talking about specific things okay. like bypasses. It, Why don't it's I, it's fine. I don't I don't you know. Well, I'd prefer hearing you go through the rest of your rationale with the rest of it, and then we can, you know, backtrack on okay. that maybe in a more. Okay. And actually, I think manner. I got permission from John to go right to nine o'clock. Well, because we have all your brains here. We're rapidly approaching it. So the more input I get, the more work I can do. <coughs> um, so yeah, but these this is this is great stuff. Uh, where was I, Jonathan? Uh, I think I got to, Page okay. seven and eight, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. All uh, right. Yes, because we were talking about wastewater. Yes. We went off on uh, a tangent. Um, good tangent, though. Very good tangent. So, okay, then I'm on page eight. And this is, you know, a few thoughts about underutilized properties, sprawl, and intensive development of limited raw land uh, to focus community energy on site redevelopment of vacant buildings and forgotten properties, brownfield sites, and former prison property, um, etc. cetera. Um, now, I, I couldn't write a list all by myself, so what I have here are some some prods, uh, make, notes, make note of formerly occupied sites in or near hamlet areas and neighborhoods, use publicly accessible information to learn about locations and land development characteristics such as online parcel uh, access and natural resource information, um, historical documents, um, compile information about vacant sites with prior uses, pinpoint properties in core previously developed or vacant areas of the community, and I, I was poking around a little bit online uh, without jumping in my car or walking. Um, so this is a little bit more of a focus on small to medium sites. Um, I remember hearing the town board talk about abandoned properties and what might happen with those. <coughs> And, you know, they were going through a sad process of, unfortunately, having to um, force the issue on properties not being uh, properly maintained. But anyway, there are small to medium underutilized parcels. And I, again, kind of went back to focusing on uh, the Beacon Line um, because in, in the Burlington, Vermont area, there is an old rail line that has now been turned into a rail trail. And there were a bunch of, you know, industrial type properties lining that. And some of those have been turned into whatever breweries, um, whatever machine shops, all kinds of interesting stuff. So, uh, you know, one of the things I was doing was just kind of moving down the beacon line right of ways and getting into street view and looking on either side to see what there was. Um, and there's some interesting stuff. And then the next thing to do would be to look at zoning, which I didn't get to. Um, and that's sort of the process, I think, Jonathan, that you're doing with the larger parcels. So I was kind of picking at, well, where are these little um, properties, or smaller properties, that maybe somebody who's an entrepreneur would be interested in, um, if they have some idea for opening a business or running some kind of a service. So, so that's kind of what that page is about. Um, and then I was just poking around at what looked to me like um, east of the village, but in the town, um, mm -hmm. on Route 52 near, uh, it's like a mixture of non-residential uses, uh, vacant commercial properties, a school, a park, cemetery, um, with, a, with a lot of, you know, single family dwellings in some neighborhood areas, the old railroad right of way in Fishkill Creek. Um, 
So I thought it was worth poking around there because there are some businesses there. So, And then east of the intersection of Route 52 and 82, along 82, there are neighborhoods that just keep going, a ballpark, bowling alley, church. So there's a little area there that has the potential for some rejuvenation with sidewalks or somebody reutilizing a property there and, and uh, uh, sprucing it up a little bit. So then again, the last item is to examine the opportunities and constraints and the zoning of, the, of formerly occupied, underutilized, or vacant sites. So I think there's a lot of potential there, and I think the beauty is that maybe some of this became underutilized because of the railroad being less active, but it also provides kind of a nice venue if that does end up becoming a pedestrian amenity. You know, people want to stop and have a little drink or <laughs> have their bike fixed or go in and buy art, crafts, whatever, whatever you have. But I've seen it in different areas. So that was my thinking there. Um, and then the rest of that section is kind of taking note of tools that are already in place in the existing zoning. Um, and that's, that is just one method of doing things. And another way of doing things is taking a look and pointing out properties that might be of interest. Um, let's see. And then I did take a look on page 10, um, having to do with redevelopment or rezoning of abandoned or underutilized properties. And I know that I took a look at the old the old mall that's south of 84 and east of Route 9. And there are some pieces out behind there that connect up near that, that railroad right of way. And they're very underutilized. Some of it might be wet, but even when I turned the map on to see if there was wetland area, there wasn't a ton. It looks like um, there's a certain amount of either construction and demolition debris or somebody stockpiling stuff for uh, future construction and then they've abandoned the site. You're talking so. about Route 9 south of 84 behind the, yep. the old Dutchess Mall? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. you, have a golf, you have a golf course there? There's a golf mm -hmm. course there, but if you, get, if you get just north of the mall property, there are a couple slivers of parcels that looked like they may have been part of a building construction place. That was the demolition was of overflow. the mall, and that's where they put and so that's, where, that's they, where, okay. where they put that and, that, and that hopefully they're going to clean so up. So that's a cleanup thing. But I think they're going to do that now. Uh, you can check with Jonathan, but that's, the, that's what they're doing now with the new warehouse going in there. Hmm. Well, I, I just know that um, the, o the overall mall property is pretty large, but most of what is entailed in that would probably be part of the new warehouse development that's yeah. being proposed. Yes, yeah. and so it would be you know considered as a whole site where the site plan for the warehouse yeah. is being considered. Yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. sort of already spoken for. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds Good. like it probably. Good. All right, Somebody not to say that in the future you know additional yeah. subdivisions couldn't. Happen, but is it brownfield at all, or is it just mm, old I don't think so. construction debris? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know that it's really been investigated back there. Right. Liz, it was left over when they tore down the mall. Right. Because that was an enclosed mall. Yeah. It was a flea market for a while. All right, so that, that was kind of... And the rest of the property is owned by Cena Cuts or New York State now. New York State. New York State owns all the rest of that property. All the way Along up the, the rail? All the way up the mountain. No, the rail is on the other oh, side. Oh, yeah, I know. Yes, you're right. It's all New York State. Um, yeah, and the rail is on the other parkland. side. The right. other side of right. the creek. Okay. Yep. I think that's all parkland. And then, uh, let's see. Then on page 11, I did a little bit of work on the gateway, so I wanted to hear some feedback on that to see if we need to add to that list, delete anything from that list. Mm -hmm. And on the gateways, the one thing that I did notice is that the, some of the gateway areas already have a sign that says, welcome to the town of Fishkill or something like that. And so then it's a matter of 
at those gateways and any other gateways the, the committee wants to examine uh, whether there, it should be something more or if that's sufficient. Uh, you have another gateway, and I know West doesn't want to hear. Russ no, I do. Want to hear I do want to hear it, more gateways. Old Route gateways. Nine. Old Route Nine. Go to your front page of your picture, and you just see a little parcel of it. Yeah. But that is a gateway between both Boppingers. Mm. On the first page. Okay. You just see a part of it. Yeah. Oh, all right. But that road comes out where Splashdown is. Okay, good. That's where I said I wanted to have sidewalks go up to Old Route 9. Okay. So quite, Old Route 9 quite is quite another gateway. there's quite a few properties okay. taking land for sale in that area. Hmm. Okay. I mean, as long as we've landed on gateway, and I think that was, I think after that, I did not do a whole lot. Hang on. Let me just dog ear that page. But I think that those were the sections I really focused on last time around. Well, you're looking at, in terms of that suggestion. I mean, Old Route 9 is sort of a, I wouldn't call it a loop, but it, go, it basically connects at two different points back to Route 9. And so the major majority of cars and vehicles traversing that area are on Route 9. Old Route 9 is kind of a mishmash of commercial, industrial, residential properties, and fairly limited traffic on there. So I'm not sure that I would consider that a separate gateway as opposed to just the Route 9 corridor entering the town there is really the major gateway. I guess you could argue that it could be a secondary gateway, but I mean, if we start getting into a lot of you know secondary and tertiary, tertiary gateways, then we're going to lose prioritizing of those areas. Well, I want to go back because we had a discussion right before the meeting about Route 82. You want to? Oh, uh, yeah. No, we talked about a number. Of, you know, I had asked Elizabeth before we started the meeting whether or not the list that she had here was just illustrative of gateways or it was it supposed to be an exhaustive list. Not necessarily because I wanted to get into, you know, the pedantics, because if you're going to put one on old Route 9, now what do you say about Smith Tower, what do you say about Cedar Hill Road, like those, yeah. that, that wasn't kind of the objective. However, there wasn't one listed on 52 traveling, I guess that would be east That's out of right. the city of Beacon right. uh -huh. and into the town of Fishkill that, you know, that, that wasn't listed. And so part of my, my questioning was, was, was whether or not that was just okay fine we already illustrated enough examples versus do we need to have one there wait route 52 east out of the town route, no route 52 east out of the city of beacon okay gotcha 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 so but where um industrial arts, industrial arts yeah. and uh Fishkill Avenue. what yeah. was it Fishkill Avenue. yes Fishkill Avenue yes say it again it's also it's also Fishkill Fishkill Avenue. Avenue. Fishkill Avenue. As you're leaving Beacon, okay. I'm yeah. Route 52. And that's not 52B. That is 52B. Yes. It is 52B. Yes. Okay, yes. good. Got it. Okay. There is already a sign there welcoming you to the town of Fishkill, but it's yes. small and not very exciting. <laughs> well, that's it. I saw yeah. the signs, and I and I took, I really, I had an intern do this. I just pointed out, these are the areas. Get me some images. Let me see what you have. And, yeah, there, there, there's a sign there. Um, and, and that's fine. Um, and I didn't know what the committee had in mind in terms of would it be something more. Like I know over in New Paltz, and the other one that I didn't look into and maybe should have is um, <coughs> entrances into the community from 84. Because that is a place where a lot of people come in. So I didn't do those because I wanted to hear your feedback on that. Well, and that's because when you leave 84, you're going into, in some places, going into kind of a commercial area that has a lot going on. Yeah. So if you wanted to really do something about Fishkill. Well, we have, Fishkill actually has three exits. Mm -hmm. Right, that are physically in Fishkill off 84. No. Yes. Don't tell that to the people in Beacon, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely people use them. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And definitely they're all heavily, has heavily heavy traffic. Yes. 
so that's a place to catch people. So if you catch them, what, what would you like to do? So that, that's the next thought. Is, it, is, there is a sign there. Yeah. Um, How does that, just once again, I'm expressing my ignorance here, I apologize. Say we con you know, concluded, okay, fine, on 9D as you travel north from I-84, there should be some sort of gateway sign. Does that go on public property in the right of way of the road? Does that go, you know, does that some sort of, you know, uh, easement from the private owner who owns the land that's right in like what's involved in actually doing that where one doesn't exist right now? Are you saying a welcome to, welcome to fiscal sign? Or some sort of gateway enhancement. At that point, you know, it's going on someone's land. It's DOT. So it would be it's technically on, within the right of way that's established well, on the road. If it's on Route 9D, yeah. it's, it's going to be DOT. If it's going to be on 52, that's DOT. Mm -hmm. Or going to be on 82. Again, DOT, yes. No, I it's understand. DOT, I'm Route 9, it's DOT. All main roads. What? All what main about roads. the interstate? If you're coming off of the interstate, some of the interstate right of ways are pretty hefty, but I would think that mm -hmm. once you're off the interstate, well, you're right into another DOT right of way I, pretty quickly. I just remember what um, huh. our previous governor wanted to do with signs on 84, so, <laughs> you know. Oh, yes, no, I remember that. I, there was a lawsuit, I think, that, that came out of that. As a, a sign way. right on 84? No, the idea of using, you know, wayfinder signs and other municipal signage for advertising purposes. Oh, okay. You know, so I... <laughs> well, no one's saying, you know, put an Eat at Joe sign on top of the Welcome to Fish Kill sign. This is really just about enhancing <laughs> the community so people understand right. you know, where they're going when they get off the highway. To your point, yes, when you get off of 84, it should say Welcome to Fish Kill, not Welcome to Beacon. <laughs> so off I-84, we should add that to, add those to the list. You said there's three. Actually, the one to welcome the beacon. You said I said it shouldn't say welcome to beacon. It should say welcome to Fishkill. <laughs> well, where it is, that's, that's where beacon starts. I'm going to have to go drive. Oh yeah, 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 yeah that, that, that sign did beacon. <laughs> right. However, when you get off and yeah. you go south, technically you're in the town of Fishkill right, for about beacon. I think several hundred feet. Right. <laughs> and welcome to beacon in Fishkill. <laughs> Let's let's <laughs> petition the town board to have them sign put up. Because when you come into the village, what does it say? Welcome to the village. Yeah. Historic village. Historic village. <laughs> historic village. <laughs> and we are we are just as historic as they we are. We are. Yes, you are. You're even prehistoric. Actually. You know, I was speaking. Uh, um, <laughs> not you. I was I mean speaking with the Verplank Plank Garden Club about. But, you know, maybe dressing up some of the gateways, and, and there's some interest there if we reach out to them. I'm glad to hear you mention that. There you are. Because that, that's kind of what I've seen yeah, in and around changed. New Paltz yeah. Island, just nice little. Again, then there's things about maintenance, and, yeah. you know, so that would have, logistically have to be worked out. But Can you just introduce yourself for the recording, because I saw you came in. Oh, I'm sorry, Jackie Bardini, and I apologize for being late. It's fine. <laughs> You're here. Um, I know one of the things that many of my communities push for is like a little monument at the bottom of a sign instead of just two posts with the sign to make it look a little more decorative, whatever, made of stone or something like that. And I happen to know that a lot of um, developers would prefer to just put the two things in the ground and not have to do the monument. But the monuments look kind of nice. They look a little classier then, and, and the uh, plantings, so. Um, the, the one more is sort of a combination of E and F, so it's Route 52 and Route 82. Um, it's where those two routes merge at the triangle, where yeah. the new statue mm -hmm. of Daniel Nimum is Nimmum. located. And um, that's really kind of the key focal point entering the town from that direction. Yeah. So although I agree that the other, you know, the farther reaches of 82 and 52 coming into the town are noteworthy of, you know, being recognized as gateways, it's really where they merge at that island that creates the real focal point. Of It'd be nice to town. do something more there, maybe. Yeah, well, with the statue already there, yeah. and there are probably, mm -hmm. you know, other events most likely that will be planned by the town there. But maybe there could be further enhancements, you know, gardening, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. things like that. Something low and green that stays green. 
But I mean, we're, I, I think we are agreeing that we should map these gateways once yep. we get them pretty mm -hmm. well set and kind of describe them, uh, what their benefits and problems are. And that one, that's actually one of the key ones, I think. I actually did have our GIS person, and I don't know if you guys want to do this in this context, um, but I did have her just do a very basic map. I'm going to lay it on this table and get out some red pens. And if anybody's inclined to either during the meeting or after, just kind of um, mark up some of the gateways that we just discussed. Um, and, you know, some of the other items, because I thought, you know, at my office, we can try to come up with uh, a map, but I think it's what the committee expresses that really matters um, in terms of what ends up getting mapped and what illustrates what is this comprehensive plan update about. So I'll, I'm going to make note. Um, I'm being loud on purpose because uh, I'm not near my microphone. Um, but I can make note of some of these locations and have uh, <clears throat> Megan is our person that does really beautiful maps and have her add these things and then um, bring it back and see if there are corrections needed. So I'm thinking gateways, maybe highlighting some of the areas where I've listed for sidewalks and pedestrian improvements, um, maybe some of these um, connections between neighborhoods, and then um, maybe areas where there are vacant or underutilized properties, if we can sort of either pinpoint an area loosely without getting too specific about one person's piece of land. Um, I think it's also worth it to you know, highlight the railroad, which she had originally done. It's actually done with a nice little railroad uh, thing. And she had things colored, but our color plotter wasn't cooperating. So Did she highlight, are you talking about the, the, the um, MTA going to the river, or are you talking about the one we're talking about going through the town and the village out to East Fishkill? Um, so on this, you know, I'm going to just turn this around for you. <laughs> you can come up and mark it up later if you like. Um, so here, um, I have a green highlighter if that'll help. Sure, why not? Use it for that. And I'm more comfortable this way. You got little stickies in there too. Before, before all the cameras, it used to always be yeah. Yeah, well, the back of my gone. head at meetings. So here, there's one in front of you too. There is. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right, didn't know that. So anyway, here, here's, I'm not going to outline the whole thing, but this is the old uh, beacon okay. line. Yeah, okay. I mean, what's, what's nice about the old beacon line is how it really runs as railroads do right through the middle of town. That would be nice. And at one point, it used to be the thing that sparked everything that happened in the core of town. And mm -hmm as most of them do. It also runs along a low flat valley, which typically has water in it. And so you've got the Fishkill Creek. Just I to let you know, it's also why they built the East Fishkill plant where they built it, was the railroad run point real close. Right, exactly, hmm. yeah. So I, that's why I think it has potential to start highlighting parcels nearby. So the gateways, um, well, I mean, I suppose the railroad could be one of the gateways. And um, Liz, on the back of that pen you have there, there's huh. also those little post post things in there. You can kind of, if that helps you. Oh, yeah. no, I'm good. All right. Just in case. Uh, thanks for the highlighter. So there's Route 52, and we'll take a look at, where did 82 go? Well. 82 comes out sort of here. Um, that's 52. The railroad does run, run along 82, parallel to 82. It comes, runs along 52, but when you, mm -hmm. you get to the fork where we have the statue, yep. okay, it yep. follows 82 out. Yep, and uh, let's see, there's 90. 90. I, I think the 90 
south of Beacon is, it's interesting. Uh, Technically, you'd have to put two gateway signs there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah, one at the mouth. Yeah. Lights into yes, one yeah. at the mouth of the tunnel, and then another one right. by University Settlement, yeah. which is you know what's recognized as being the town city border. It's kind of a busy area, and people are kind of just, I think, trying to get through. You know what I mean? Well, it's. It's you have the fort, you know, you have the new trail going through I know, yeah. which is, I think, part of the, the fjord trail. That is, is also the fort, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. right. That's no, trail. I know, yeah. but it's to try to get, because people that know about the hiking will park there, and it's a pretty dangerous situation, so I think they're trying to... Well, mm. they're going to be putting in a parking area for them. Yep. Well, you've good. seen it. At the Duchess Manor, right? So, since that's considered yeah, Duchess that's Junction, awesome. are my complicating yeah. things by saying this is the hamlet of... Parking. Yes. You know, this Duchess Junction, the hamlet of town of Fishkill. Where would you mm. say Duchess Junction is? That, right where you're talking. Right. Mm -hmm. That's here? South, right here? south of the city line yep. with the city beacon. That is oh, Duchess. Wait, wait, are we talking? Oh, it is south of the city line. For some yes. reason, I yeah. thought it was right here where these. No, it's south of the mm -hmm. city. Yeah. Okay. Correct. And that would be the same thing for Route 52B. I mean, the little hamlets that pop all over the town of Fishkill there that were annexed many years ago. Would that be complicating things there? It's a hamlet town of? It has its own fire. I mean, it has, know a fire it has Duchess Junction. Yeah. It's interesting. It has, its, that list it has its own we, fire. We, it has that fire department. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, when we did the questionnaire, did we? Yeah, list? we, 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 we did. 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 Mm -hmm. I believe it was the Susan community, yeah. yeah. I mean, most people do not know it's part of us because the only way you can get to from here to it's that is to go through Beacon. Yeah. We'll go all the way down to Phillipstown. We'll come back around the All the way around. It was a community, what, 100 years ago? Complete with a train station and light industry, but I want to say since they put the ton, like there hasn't been any development down there in a very long time. And, you know, obviously the, the housing stock and the, the zoning kind of reflect that. But legally, it is part of the town of Fishkill. They get Beacon schools, but that has nothing to do with the actual government. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And a lot of it's New York State Parkland. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the mountain and all the other stuff, yes. But I'm just saying that when you get down along the 90 corridor, you do have, I think there's one commercial plot, and everything else is pretty much residential at that point. Yeah. And, we, and that's also where Bannerman's Island is, mm -hmm. yep. Dutchess Junction. Yep. Right. Yep. So it seems that some of these gateways are maybe more like corridors of entrance into the town yeah. because they aren't necessarily a spot but they may traverse a certain l larger area so right. like that Maybe area of route 9 d like might be like that kind of more like a corridor. especially since that's going to be where the trail is going to go the yeah. fjord trail that's going to create a whole new kind of image mm -hmm. and you know i think the town could take advantage of that mm -hmm. image the other area that I think is a little bit like that is Route 9 um, approaching uh, from Putnam County northbound, where yes, there's the entrance in the actual town, but the, to me the real gateway, or maybe it's another corridor, is at the um, former Duchess Mall site, which is mm -hmm. going to be redeveloped, well, presumably now. And so that's quite a separation between the town boundary down there and where the Duchess Mall property is. But that's sort of the real entrance into the um, Route 9 commercial corridor. And I think it would be a good idea to designate that somehow as an area that needs redevelopment, rehabilitation, mm -hmm. um, cleaning it up, because visually it's not very attractive at all right now. But if we can use the design guidelines that are in our comprehensive plan and in the actual zoning code now, um, I think that's going to help us get better results with development that does go into that area. So I don't know if you could figure out a way to sort of stretch that gateway into a corridor that recognizes entering the commercialized area of the town. Coming from both directions, really. If you're coming off of 84, kind of, yeah. and if you're coming up this way, this is, I see Clove Road, that must have been Old Route 9. Old, oh, yes. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. We also have the quarry there, which someday may not be a quarry anymore. 
And then we have to grab it before seeing the cuts. Well, do they grab stuff like that? Usually, well, that, they, like they that. grab the whole Steel mountain and then sell it to the state. That's what they, they, right. Historically, they have. <laughs> that's what they've done to the whole oh, mountain. Yeah, they, they did that with, um, crap, what's the, not Storm King, but the mountain next to Storm King. Con Ed was going to put a hydro plant there. They went and got the entire mountain. Yeah. And then cut that's it. That's cool. Hmm? Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, that would be a great something mm -hmm. for development in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm going to get back in my cage over there. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how many more years that quarry is going to go. Typically, quarries, at least in the past, unless this is a really old one, have a mined land reclamation plan. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it yes, does. Yes, they do. They, they also um, start expanded into a new area mm -hmm. last year. They requested and got it. Was last year a few years ago? Yeah, maybe, when they bought, maybe they bought, two years. They, they bought the RV camp. So. Right, right. So they expanded a little bit. So I don't, I mean, they have a, a, a plan. I know they have an active plan to, uh, to make the land usable, but I don't think they're going anywhere soon. Right. And I mean, I, I'm just curious what kind of a relationship does the owner and the operation have with the rest of the community? Is it positive or? I, I think well, it's pretty positive. Uh, uh, yeah. um, I mean, you know. I, it I, has gone both ways. <laughs> yep. When they okay. wanted to do some mining, we had a big problem. All right, we had lawsuits galore. Oh. They're trying to protect the uh, the rattlesnakes there too. Uh, I yeah, think. yeah. They don't want to mine. Really. Yeah. So we had we had all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. The if you look on the previous plan, um, one of the owners of that quote sat on the plan, but I believe it's been sold since then. But I'm not sure. Well, it'd probably be worth looking at yeah. what the zoning looks like there. To see whether it's consistent with whatever the terrain is or will be right. at the end, and also, you know, is it is it the kind of zoning that affords opportunities after you know they've gotten through the period of mine land reclamation yeah. to develop the site and use it for something, or is well, it difficult zoning yeah. where they might be inclined to? Okay, we have we have I don't we, know. Yeah, we we have two different fishing. Yeah, we have two different mines though. I know, I see yeah. that. Yes. Yep. And it's the one on the going, the one on the south on the riverside. Creekside. Oh. Yeah. yeah. On Route Nine, yeah. on the on the riverside, mm -hmm. is the one I'm talking about. The west That's side. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then you have another one, it's which is a, which is a little bit newer. The land use code is 720. It's it's industrial mining. Yeah. Yeah, you got, you the got one. it. You got the one, That's and then you got another one on the other side. It's on that up, shop up turn. here. Yeah, but, but yep. all of those are in both of those are in Fishco. Yep. Oh, I know. I've I've seen them. I mean, and they're near each other. Same so. thing, Fred. Hmm? The land use code's the same. It's all the same. Well, Industrial it's worth quarry. Oh no, no, I understand, yeah. it, but I don't know who the owners are. Oh, North State Associates LP. And who's the, who's across the street? I think it's the same. I know it's two separate owners. They are? Yeah. Clementi, unless, unless Clementi Materials Duchess owns the one on the uh, west side. On the west side, yeah. They're out of uh, Water Verlet. They're, up, they're upstate people. It'd yeah. probably be worth examining in the industrial zoning to see what kind of opportunities there would be for uses like this after they're done. Well, anything industrial, it's just that's the top tier. You can do all sorts of stuff from there. You're going down at scale, it's up to the town to just adopt it, that's yeah. all. Right. There's a beautiful lake in there now, so. <laughs> <laughs> when you say adopt, adopt. Well, I mean, you know, whatever you want to do. You know, it's an open slate. We get pretty, we, you know, industrial is, you know, heavy industrial is, is kind of like the hardest going to get. And then if you want to change that, you can change, you know, the town's open to most towns, like most people, but, you know, 
they're they're usually you know receptive to making it wherever you want to do as long as it's you know, in the best interest for the town. It's just a matter of you know once you start changing it, and then you want to change again. It's a little difficult. It's just heavy industrial and stuff of this nature. It's much easier to move. Did the 2009 plan result in it being zoned industrial, or was it already industrial? I it was already yeah, industrial. Right, okay, back. so it's just yeah. there. Way back. There was no attempt to change it, which maybe that's the way it should be. Nothing. I'm going to tell you it goes back 60, 70, 80, 100 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to know at least 70 or 80 years. <laughs> I was waiting for that for I'm thinking okay. of me, so it's before me. Okay. All right. So, um, let's see, where did we get to? We got to gateways. So, I mean, I, those are the sections that I really added new material to. Yeah. So I'm really interested in hearing feedback on any of it. Uh, I just, I, you, know, I, you know, going back, but I, I, I want to include um, some people who should be included in the plan for the rail trail, which is going to be DEC, has to be included in it because it's going to be along the water. Yeah. All right, and I know they're going to put their two cents in no matter what we do. And also, Cena Cutson mm -hmm. should be included because hopefully they can fund a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Metro North or the MTA, whoever actually legally owns it, should be like while they don't use it for moving rail cars anymore, their fiber optic network that's the backup that goes from Beacon all the way out mm -hmm. to Danbury. So, to the extent that it doesn't interrupt their ability to have telecommunications along that line, you know, they're not doing anything with it. And I didn't see anything in the plan about fiber optics either. Should it be included? Oh, no, no. I, I, I'm no, not talking. I'm just saying, I'm saying that. No, this plan. No. I don't know that it warrants being included in there. Metro North, you know, had access for many years. They bought the Beacon Line, I want to say, within the past 20 years. Beyond one rail car movement, I think, in the late 90s, they've yeah. only, they have strung up fiber optic line for communication purposes. That's it. The idea being that when you start talking about, you know, yeah, some of it's buried, some of it's strung on poles. I can, I'm, I, I'm not their facility guy, so I can't speak to exactly what the physical plant is, but they are using it for a non-transportation purpose at the moment. And to the extent that everyone wants to redevelop it, it's just something to take in consideration. If, you know, if you started digging or looking to remove, you know, appurtenances, if you will, along the right of way. Right. I mean, I guess I would think that. I mean, I, I don't know what other ideas people would have, but a lot of these railroad right-of-ways have a pretty nice base of fill, yeah. hmm. typically. Hmm. They're relatively stable, relatively flat, hmm. um, pretty amenable to a pedestrian way that can become a tourist attraction would certainly... Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm just be, saying, you know, yeah. take into consideration that it's more than what you see case in point. Of course. There is a buried gas line that runs along the railroad right-of-way through the center of the village. There was a leak right. there, I want to say, within the past year, definitely during COVID, when they went and mitigated the gas line issue, which was underneath the rails, right. they actually paved over the rails along, um, mm -hmm. I guess it's Old Main Street, the road that has uh, All Sport and the uh, entrance into Saratella Park. Yeah, right. that's, that, well, that basically was Old Route 9. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right because that's where the bridge used to be over there. Um, we also have the sewer line running from. That, I mean, it makes, it makes right. absolute all sense. All the way down into Beacon. It's a great linear pathway. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Whose sewer line? Well, we town? The, the, town, the, okay. the, the town sewer line runs from, I guess that's, they connected it at uh, Doug Phillips Park, which is the old sewer plant. When they decommissioned mm -hmm. that and you can go run it right down along the railroad here and there, all the way down, you know, it's on the north side of the river and all the way down to the Beacon Sewer Plant. Yeah, she goes right on. Which is near Denny Point. At which point they probably could use the right of way the entire way. 
Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, he, it could lead, but I'm just saying that that would be the logical route if yeah. they connected the, the sewage plant, Doug Phillips. Yeah. And it, and there was no sewer facilities north of that of Doug Phillips Park, because that covered the Duchess, old Duchess function up there, the hill, it ran down there. I, I have a question about these rail trails, though. Um, the ones that have been completed, with all the railroad ties that were down. Uh, was there any type of remediation that took place? I couldn't tell you. You know, those old what, ones what with the creosol, you know, soaked in creosol. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Well, I, 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 I know they ran that line all the way from Putnam County all the way up to Poughkeepsie now. Sure. Mm -hmm. And they all had the train tracks. Yeah. Right. Set of curiosity. We may want to contact the county to see what they did for the rail trail that goes from Popol Junction to Poughkeepsie because with the exception of a handful of telephone poles and errant ties that are, you know, kind of in the woods, they got rid of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But the idea being that their resource being that they just went through that project in the not too distant past. Like I'm sure somebody in the county executive's office was probably still here from that project. Getting rid of the ties. Yes. Specifically yes, what was done with that and yeah. any environmental concerns because of things like Creosu sure, the ties. Of course. Like a linear yes. brownfield. And I can tell you, that, yeah, that's pretty much what it turns out uh -huh. to be. Yes, yeah. <laughs> right. right. And I can tell you, those tracks have not been updated in 50 years, or 40 you, years. You can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have not been updated at all. Oh, updated, yes, sure. Yeah, that, that's not a 110-pound rail or anything uh -huh. close to it. I know they corrected a couple of plots here and there where they had water dam, you know, water yeah, way, yeah, but there's yeah. nothing really done. And I think a lot of the rail trails end up. I don't know if the, the surface that they put down ends up becoming kind of a cap. In other words, they're going to put down some kind of a sub-base over that and then cap it with either pavement or some kind of gravel. I mean, I don't want to get into the, I guess, the, uh, the specifications for what that project would look like, but you've got things like what they did in Wasaig, where essentially they just went and capped it and put blacktop on it and right. didn't look back. But then you also have that right. softer service that they used in the rail trail that goes from Hopewell to Poughkeepsie, you really can't, like, you can't go and plow that. It's designed to be able to be used for, like, cross-country skiing in the winter. And, and yep. Yep. So, so I mean, there, there are definitely, there's a catalog of options as it relates to, to dealing with that. And yes, if you do go ahead and cap it and put asphalt over it, you don't have to worry about anything leaching. Right. Digging and removing things is part of the problem. One, one nice thing about the rail trail, if we, if we put it in, it doesn't include, it's not going to need any bridges, all right, nope. unless you want to go over roads, because it'll, you know, the creeks are already taken care of, everything else is taken care of, all the water. Are there water lines in it, too? Probably. Hmm? There must be water lines in it. Yeah, well, uh, some water lines so running along it, some, some parts of it, but I don't know. I know the new bridge is going up over in the creek, you know, down by me there. They have, they have the sewer and water. You know, another utility. And yeah. Water. But they have to move over. And they got the pump station right there. Are you talking about the bridge in Glenham? So the bridge in Glenham is going to be replaced eventually by the county. Huh. Um, and it's going to be pedestrian and bicyclist oriented friendly. Um, I don't know what the timing of that's going to be, but I'm pretty sure it's in the transportation improvement plan now. It is. Okay. We're starting in about two weeks. Yeah. I know it was coming soon. There we oh, go. Actual for construction. Mark. There we go. Yeah, yeah it was just the up the other day and I just got a letter actually for the first time ever that they're going to proceed. So um, it's going to have you know, And then they said something about fish, you know. Uh, third quarter, fourth quarter of 23. But that'll look, you know, look, taking into account the contingencies and things that, you know, go sideways. But Are they going to make it into a one lane? You know, it's remaining two lane. Um, Is it any wider? <laughs> what? I hope so. Is it any wider? Um, I don't believe so. I I, well, it is because it's you know wider in the sense where you're going to have sidewalks, yeah. sidewalks on both sides. Uh, 
Um, I've asked uh, our supervisor if we can uh, push for um, crosswalk mm -hmm. uh, signage and make it a law allowed. So, because right now you got almost a 90 degree angle of mm -hmm. coming around, and it's going to be opened up to a 45. And, I have also pushed him to see if he can submit to the county for a speed uh, limit there because there's no there's no speed limit on that street. Huh? Yeah. So um, I just got to follow up with him. It goes from the request from the town to the county to the state to get this, the, the speed sign up there. So, I mean, I'm somewhat excited to see the end result because you know they're going to enhance the park. You know, and if you can incorporate the rail. Which track, park? Um, the Van Pelt. You know, it could be really a great benefit. Um, I, I think my only caveat is, you know, the four wheels work for that matter, the 18 wheels that come through there. Mm. I wish they would cap that. Mm. I really do. Because um, what comes through there is just breathtaking. It's like, how do you get that through here all the time? You know, I've been going through all the neighborhood in the back way to get down to Route 9D. So it would be pretty interesting. Try to stay positive on that one. That's why I was asking if it's wider, because whatever the DOT minimum is for a lane, that's exactly what those two lanes are. Yeah, exactly. It's a tight fit with a truck. For sure. Well, no, listen, they don't care. They're oh, I know they don't care. They don't, you know, <laughs> don't make the hold of everybody all day long. I've seen that. You know, and, you know, and then if you're, if you're building, uh, you know, maybe even down in Beacon, they might have something going on, or, you know, redevelopment somewhere else. You got all this stuff coming through, all these big concrete trucks. And it's, yeah. it's pretty amazing. So hopefully it goes well. That is a bypass for 52B. Mm -hmm. Correct. Technically, it is. Yeah. <laughs> It is. Down Washington Avenue into the city yeah, beacon? Yes, 52 yeah. minutes to bypass if you don't get on 84. Mm -hmm. I'd like to request it like a toll booth there or something. <laughs> <laughs> Benefit yeah. to you, right? No, for the community, not for me. Well, why don't you put one up on the new bridge? On the new bridge, yeah. Yeah, because that is your toll booth. <laughs> <laughs> so. One of the sections that I haven't really, that I didn't dive into yet, but I want to, um, conserve critical lands and I think there's an opportunity to kind of have that section be something that winds literally in and out of um, the connection with the beacon right-of-way but also there are what, a lot of parks and stuff. well I'm over on page 15 there really hasn't been much written um, in that section or the one that follows, wait a minute here, uh, page 17, which is kind of, I think that uh, section F, conserve critical lands, and section G, preserve special significant environmental resources, could be combined. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that um, early in this process, or maybe before I, I had gotten fully involved with this process, there was a, a woman that was emailing us about a very interconnected wetland that happened to be in the rear of her property but connected with other properties. So I'm going to follow up on that email. But then I also thought it, it would be worth it to look and see what kinds of wetlands and tributaries are flanking the Fishkill Creek. Because protecting all those will keep the quality of that water better. And I'm, I'm sure the planning board does whatever it can to try to do stormwater, you know, stick to the stormwater regs. Yep. Um, I know that a lot of folks that are developing pieces of lands find the stormwater regulations annoying, uh, to say the least, but it, it's pretty important. But I think if we can identify any properties that or, or wetlands or tributaries flanking uh, the Fishkill Creek, it wouldn't hurt to start listing those and identifying them on a map. Is so there any DEC available data that you, like, like in a GIS form, like in a mapping format? Oh, there's tons of yeah, mapping. I, I would imagine there is. Yeah. They identify floodplains and everything else. I would think that they've already mapped this out. Maybe yeah. we can overlay mm -hmm. that as yep. a layer on this map. Yep. It Didn't you send those maps out to us like a, at the beginning, like a year ago? <laughs> I might have. Okay. 
I might, I might have. I think so. Yeah. You can, was it the, the are you talking like about the aquifers and all of the other environments? Well, there was a, yeah, there was an aquifer. Um, well, there was the aquifer protection law. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember doing anything about streams and wetlands no, and stuff No, I think like we that. talked about doing it, though. Right. Like uh -huh. wetlands, streams, yeah. water courses. Aren't you, you can easily yeah. populate that on the, uh, the parcel access, yes. Oh, yeah, I can, I can, yeah, get, shows, I can get Megan busy doing that. It shows the federal <laughs> so and right. the state. Yep. Streams. And then the 100 and 500 year, Trips. I believe, as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. We do have a lot of wetlands in the 100 year plain. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. when they changed the maps, we had everybody come in complaining. Oh. Yeah, because now they got to buy flood insurance. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah all, all the years they lived there, all 10 years, they never had any water. You know, since and the, today, no one has any water. That's true. That's good, yeah. You can go look at my lawn. Yes, none of us have any water right now. So with the Fishkill Creek as low as it is right now, and as long as it has been low, this would be an awesome opportunity. If, if they could push for somebody, you know, I would, you know, of course, hop on in a heartbeat, clean. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that without DEC. I gosh, you, Fred. Yeah, I understand that. If you, if you, uh, you know, environmental conservation. go over to Doug Phillips Fishing Park, so yeah. it's dry. I know, I saw it already. I don't know where, how the water's getting to you. I'm it's seeing tires and stuff. I'm, I'm, see, I'm seeing 50 gallon drum barrels with people's legs hanging out of them. <laughs> we, we, have, we have intent to clean that up uh, behind Old Post Mall. Yeah. Man, and then just, just giving us hard, a hard time just to get. All right, look. We can't even go inside there and pull out a, a, a tire or any of these shopping carts. I mean, we got the whole it shop is. right there. It's really bad. You know, and, and, and when, he, when it rains, the whole thing gets flooded. You know, you see a lot of your garbage in the creek is where you have these the, the, these little bridges. You mm -hmm. know, they're going across and out the window yep. it goes. It's not uncommon for me to just watch stuff float down yep. from the, whether it's the park or people just going over the bridge. But there's a, I, I'd love to yank some stuff out. I, well, I would love to make it a navigable creek again. Agreed. Do you know there's a car right behind Walmart in the creek? Yes. The VW. No, I didn't know that one. Yeah, there is. I was kayaking over top of it. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. It, it. Not now, you know, going over it. No, you walk over <laughs> it. You walk across it. I think another, another way to have that stuff be more noticeable is to um, I don't know, you know, I don't know if some of the parks that are right on the creek, do you have a clear view of the creek? Is there, are there like little, oh, yeah. little yeah, places no, between the sure. bushes where you can get down and go oh, absolutely, yeah. fish or yep. put your feet we in have, the water? We have, we have three parks, all right, that have absolute clear views, access yep. to... Yeah, good. good. Yeah, right. Doug Phillips. Doug uh, Phillips. Saratella Sarat Park. Which is really the village. Which is a yeah. long stretch. Yes. And, People fish there. And, and, Good. And Van Pelt. Yeah. All right. And then. Good. And then we have that piece of property that's hidden, that's town owned, that's along the creek too. I saw that. Huh? I saw that. I know. Well, that was the one I was talking about. You know, earlier, way back when. There's a couple of pieces, like little. Well, there's a couple. That's chunks. a big hunk. That's 50 acres. Which re what are you referring to, Fred? Huh? Which one are you referring it's, to? It's 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 just before the um, you get onto uh, well it's. Um, off of Blodgett Road. Yeah. You have to go in Blodgett Road because that's your only access and then head um, towards Beacon. Heads so a towards big hunk of property that is owned by the town. Oh, correct. Actually, directly, if you take uh, the Blodgett over, directly over the tracks, it splits right to the right is the town. Yeah, correct. And to the left is the guy from Crosby Court. You got it. And I walked back there. And Mike Del Vecchio has got the one next to it. Yep. So it's it's a piece of town land, but it's not a park. It's good size. Piece. No, no. Well, one they have enough to take care of. Yes. Right. And two, you have to develop it. I figured there had to be a reason. And two, you have to develop it, and there is no. And if we put the trail in, there it is. Yeah, you and know. It's going to be. You know, and don't forget, you have to need some place to park your cars if you're going to use the trail. Yeah, well, the elevation over there is pretty, I mean, it's it's pretty moist over there. It's, yes, it's wet. Yeah, it's pretty wet over there. So you want people parking. But that's why. That, at hey, some place far back from that, in, I'm, in better I'm, soil. I'm assuming that's how the town got it. Somebody didn't want to pay taxes. Yeah. Maybe the town took or it Or it was part of a an open space bit of no, 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 cluster development. So. I don't know. Yeah. Probably Do you think, I, mean, wait, I don't think so. Could the town have taken it from the railroad? Huh? Could the town have taken it from the railroad when the thing fell into disrepair? Sure. Yeah. 
the idea being that before Metro North, there, was there, a, was there, there is a road. Central there there, there is a road. Yeah. There right. is a road that's legal to cross. Um, yes. The tracks. That's correct. There used to be a house over can, there, a couple houses a over can, there. Um, soda place on the other side of that. They stored soda and had a fire in the 70s. And we had cans all over the town <laughs> flying up and popping from the. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Huh? I mean, that was. That was unique. <laughs> are, are soda? Doug Phillips and Sarah Taylor and Van Pelt, they're very well used parks, aren't they? Um, those three are. Okay. And where do people park? Uh, I mean, there's parking. Yeah, there's plenty of room. Yeah, it looks you know, like they're, they're pretty. Yeah. Okay. Van Pelt is the smallest of the three. Right. Sally Taylor, which is a village owned park, mm -hmm. is the largest of, of them. Right. And so they're uh, well and Doug Phillips well is, used. is very large, and they're redeveloping Doug Phillips now. Right. The, the town is they tore down all the fences for the. I'm assuming they're going to redo the basketball court and. The okay, so these court. are places that have maybe little porta potties or some kind of bathroom facilities. Mm -hmm. Not that. No, not. You know, I don't I think Doug Phillips. No, my kids play baseball there or right. practice baseball right. there. So it's not they're, that yeah, kind of park. People have been right. using trees. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, Doug Phillips yeah. did have one, and they took it down. Right. All right. But that is also a town garage. For, for the parks department. Yeah. So they do have they do have a building there and that's also the old um, sewer plant. Mm -hmm. Right. And somebody ought to go and paint that. Some kids ought to go in there and paint that mm -hmm. nice big oh, no, piece of cement. That could be somebody's Eagle Scout project. And is there a lot of litter and stuff like that? Or yes. Pretty? Okay. Mm -hmm. There's also an active. I'll answer that right away. Yes. It's right. it's also the dog mm -hmm. park. Yeah. Okay. If you uh -huh. go back behind the sewage building, there's a dog park back there. There's some sort of. Yeah, but you know the dog park it doesn't have litter in it. <laughs> yeah, funny. No, I'm serious. Why? There's no litter there. Cause well, it's all fenced in. Yeah. It's, there's no litter in there. There's litter in the rest. You know, the other part, part of the park. Huh. They need to maintain it. Is what they need to do. Oh no! Well, I know it's but it's closed every t Tuesday, so they can clean it up. Yeah. Or Thursday. Any any signage about littering or their waste receptacles so you can oh, yeah. throw things oh, away no. if you need All to. All three have waste. Yeah. Okay, so it's just oh, no, people no. being no. okay. Yeah. People I get it. Being okay. People being people. <laughs> yep. I, I, signage would be nice. Okay. To be honest with you. I mean, it couldn't hurt. No, I agree with you. There should be some signage. There is a no we, red, uh, Van Pelt, and there's one barrel, but it's mm. okay. Where? Oh, red Van Pelt. Carry in, carry out. Oh, it's just, I agree with you there, but people don't. But agree. people don't, and that's why it's nice to have some kind of a receptacle. Exactly. Yes. And you can normally you can fish on all three. Not today. Hmm. But probably no swimming. Huh? Nothing. You can swim. You you can swim in certain spots. You, you okay. really can, and we have uh, some other you spots you can swim. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And used to be a big like swimming park at what? Doug Phillips, the, <laughs> at the backfield. It, uh, I said I'd rather not glow. Doug Phillips? You'd rather not glow. I know that. Yes. Mm. The implication being if I go and swim in. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I thank you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a little shallow. I think we're straying here a little bit. What? I had I had some other comments. Go, please, um, please, oh, go please, 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 <laughs> speak up. Yeah, we were going to spend the last 20 minutes just kind of chatting. <laughs> um, so actually, I sent at about 6.05 p.m. tonight my that. version yeah. of um, my comments and suggestions on Liz's document. Good. And so I didn't expect that anybody would have taken a look at it by now, but you'll have them when you get back. Good. And you'll have it. But maybe just highlighting a couple of things without spending a lot of time on them. So I think, so the pagination of this is a little different because the you know, the comment margin gotcha. changed the pages, gotcha. but I think it's still page three. Um, we're talking about sidewalks here. This is in the goal of connect people and places and uh, in the objective two that's talking about addition of sidewalks. Um, so part D is talking about US Route 9 and Interstate 84, and it kind of accurately describes what's there. And I suggest um, a sidewalk should be added along the west side of Route 9 from the central entrance driveway 
um, at the former Duchess Mall site to the southern entrance driveway. So that's basically the central driveway is pretty much across from Van Wyck Lake Road, I think, at the, at the traffic light. No, actually it's not, no, it's not quite there. The central driveway is a little bit farther down. Anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the sidewalk should be, really be added along that whole frontage of okay. that, what I call the, du the former Duchess Mall site, but it also includes, you know, Home Depot and the other stuff in there. I like that. What about connections across the street? So, yeah. Um, I mean, there's just a restaurant there, but is there potential for more? So, you've all heard of Continental Commons. I'm sure, I'm sure mm -hmm. the proposal well, that's, that's build across. Well, it has preliminary site plan approval. They had it. It's in litigation. Um, there is a proposed sidewalk that would go all the way along the eastern side of Route 9, along the frontage of the Continental Commons property all the way down to Van Wyck Lake Road. From Snook to Van Wyck. Basically, yeah, okay. from Snook, right, Sorry. exactly. And then there's a proposed crosswalk that's already been basically okayed by state DOT mm -hmm. to cross over at Van Wyck Lake Road across to the west side of Route 9. So that would kind of be a nice gotcha. way, but I, what I suggested in my commentaries may be explaining that those things have already been taken into consideration and I mean there's not it's not definite that Continental Commons will in fact be ultimately approved with final approvals depends what happens with the um, the court cases and everything should we just frame it that way that it's yeah. anticipated yeah I mean it's, gotcha. there's nothing wrong with indicating that a proposal yeah includes certain features is that D? Yeah, yeah, the question D. is about gotcha. the sidewalk going across the street there. Is, is that practical? Is it uh, yeah. connecting well, the west side there? The side, it was It'll a be a pedestrian activated crosswalk. Okay. Um, and state DOT, you know, has to ensure safety of the pedestrians that will be using it. So I'm sure they, they're taking a close look at that. Right. It's a pretty wide road and it's yes it's going to take a little bit of special five attention lanes, basically five lanes yeah. yeah I mean they'll have to have a probably a pretty long crossing phase for pedestrians and probably even maybe something like those some kind of flashing warning lights mm -hmm. like yeah. they put in uh, the village of Fisco recently yep all right so that's that one then um, I had just some, a couple of comments or suggestions on, I think it's page nine. This is under the promote good design of the built environment, but it's, let's see, two, three. Four. It's an objective five, require that new commercial development enhances the town's character and reflects vernacular site layout and historic architectural styles. And then you talk about the design guidelines in Article 16 of the town code. And I suggested adding a couple of things that I think we've talked about a couple of times, but we never really settled on them, but this would be the time to do it. So I added an A, discourage standard corporate franchise architecture, and B, discourage big box designs um, that's a little hard to define, but I think most people know what oh, we yeah. mean when we say it. Um, but I just, I guess I wanted, you know, wanted people's input on that. I, I think it's, it would be a good idea to put something like that in these guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, if anyone has any reactions to that. Jonathan, were you putting that under five, five? And you said that was, what was that under objective five and then there would be an a and a b so to amend maybe amend those yeah provisions yeah they need updating then on page 11 i think it's under
the goal of creating great places for people. Um, objective one talks about design neighborhoods with streets that are vital public spaces and safe for pedestrians and cyclists, not just cars. And then I just added a reference right after that, follow the complete streets policies that have been adopted into the town of Fishkill Code. So I don't know that people really realize it, but the, um, the town actually has adopted those. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the gateways enough, I think. Hey, uh, just uh, before you go on, just mm -hmm. the page right before that, uh, page. page 10, where you have the text, in the middle you have Texaco property, it's now Chevron. So I think you may want to switch that, yeah. even though us old people yeah. know it's Texaco. It's Texaco, yeah. It's now Chevron. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's listed differently. I noticed that in the text. No, yes. Yeah, so. Actually, I, I noted that in my, so again, there's a lot more. Yeah, we more. were just on that page on my icon. Yeah, there's a lot more. I'm not going through all of my comments, but there's also, I ended up with like 20 some odd comments in the margins that I couldn't Good. figure out how to put them in text, but just brought things up. And actually on that one, since you mentioned it, Fred, thanks. Um, I had a comment about that site, which is also referred to as the Glenna Mills site. Oh, that's old. And <laughs> well, the Glenna Mills is old, oh, yeah. but they've yeah, adopted the, that historic, historic uh, aspect reminded. to the now Chevron site. Right. So they call it the Glenna Mills site. Yeah, okay. And it actually is within the Chevron property on Fishkill Creek. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm just suggesting that we somehow enhance this wording a little bit more about the former Texaco property to mm -hmm. just talk a little bit about the work of the community advisory committee that was prepared um, and Chevron has put out an actual report kind of summarizing a lot of the things that were done. Um, and so I just added a little bit of, you know, suggested And are approaches. any of these, you know, available to? Absolutely. Are they planning There's a for whole documents? No, 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 no. They're on the Glenham Mills website. Okay, good. And good, I think good, I have good, provided good. that in previous emails. Yeah, I think you have. I can do it again, but. Nope. Um, it's, I have uh, to leave early, but. Sorry? I said I have to leave early. Oh. Um, our next meeting is September 14th, is that correct? Well, one of the things I, I did make for you guys is a new timeline. Yes. So you can have a look at that. Thank you. Yeah. So yes, our next one is, I think we, we we're trying to aim for two meetings in September, September 14th and 28th. But please do look at this timeline because um, one of the goals, and we'll, I want to come back to what you're talking about. Um, I'll, I'll, you know what, I don't want to interrupt your flow. Let's, no, no, that's okay. Okay. It's important we cover So I, I started working through, what did we have, good night. Yeah. What did we have left to do? And then I started working from the end point. Um, so oh. if you go to the uh, eh, second to last page, because the last page is just a header, um, <laughs> was the concept of adopting the update on December 7th, which I think is possible. Um, but you'll see uh, the couple steps before that where I have big question marks uh, on uh, 42 and 43 because that committee meeting would be November 23rd, the day before Thanksgiving. So that's why that has all question marks. And so, so if we want to avoid that, then the idea is to um, you know, try to really um, get through a lot as quickly as possible in the next several meetings. And, but I've also, I just want to alert you, take a look at how we're going to be doing the dance back and forth um, with the town board um, going from step 33 on. It is a lot, and um, I mean, that's based on the goal of getting this done by the end of the year. Well, we have a guest coming for our next meeting, correct? Yes, came on. We're gonna work on that. <laughs> oh, 
okay. Well, because that would be part of the plan. Because that's going to, if he takes up an hour. Well, would he take up an hour? I hope uh, not. <laughs> Maybe we should give him like a rough time frame of mm -hmm. 7 to yeah, 7.30. Yeah. We have, you know, I we mean, have, I'm, I'm we hoping have, he gets a lot done with Elizabeth in the next yeah, couple weeks. True. Yeah. yeah. And I then it's just more of a uh, educational part, and we can pepper him with questions. And yeah. But, yeah, because you have a lot of water and sewer districts. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I don't want him to come here and then have to come here again and answer questions. I want to get all the questions out okay. with Elizabeth, and then when he comes here, he, you know. And and what I want to say about that too is, in this kind of framework where we're doing a comprehensive plan update we're not going to walk into this with all the studies done we're going to pinpoint what kind of studies we need to do okay so so yeah we we should have him here and have that conversation yeah. um but yeah. we won't have all the answers when we get to the end but we'll be saying we need to get these answers okay. that'll be that you know that's okay could, so can we plan two different dates for him to come I think because in case he can't come for the first one. We well, I mean, we're meeting the 14th and 28th, so yes, I'm going to so shoot for the 14th. Okay, well, that's what I said. Yeah. So, but if, and then you can adjust once you find out. Yeah, either 914 or 9. Frame. Okay. I mean, I think that would be easier to do than when we walk in and. And I wrote down his name, and I'm assuming somebody has Trump. his. I'll get his contact information. I'm sure somebody in my office has it. Okay, no, so that's sure. all I wanted to give you a heads up on. Take a look at that, yeah. so we can talk about that next time. Yeah, that's great. And then what else do you have? Uh, well, I don't need to spend too much time. I think everybody will have a chance to look through these. Um, okay, so, so everybody got more detail. Every, okay, I sent good. it to everyone. Good. Um, Very helpful. Let's just see if there's anything else I can quickly highlight. Um, Go to page, what is my page 16, it's which, is, our page 13. which is goal F, conserve critical lands. Yeah, that's our and page 15. Okay. Well, it begins that way. And it actually is in objective one. Okay. Um, I had C comprehensive plan page two. And so okay. it's, it's talking about basically with the question marks underneath that, it's talking about map two, which identifies um, efforts to protect and preserve lands. Mm -hmm. So what that map was, was a recommendation to consider adoption of a recreation district. That's what map two shows. I saw that. <clears throat> but it really doesn't tell you much about what that is or how it would yeah, work. Yeah, I didn't really or, understand that. Yeah. Honestly, I looked at that and it was and, like. And it was a, you know, a very detailed map showing specific sites like Stony Kill Farm and um, the Hudson Highland State Park Preserve. Again, you know, they're both owned by the state um, to different degrees. They have protection, let Stony Kill less than the Hudson Highland State Park. Right. Jonathan, weren't we also talking about uh, the um, Fresh Air Fund for that too? Yes, so, right, that's, that's another one that was actually shown on yeah, that we're map. We were talking about that. Yes, so, um, so really, I think what we want to do is flesh that out a little bit more about, you know, and actually, I've seen some other communities that call these types of zones uh, conservation zones as opposed to recreation zones because they're not all recreation oriented like Stony That's Kill. I, that puzzled me about it. I looked and I thought yeah. it's going to be a giant park district. Yeah, Stony Kill is not like that. Um, it, you know, it's, it's a, a different type of use really. But I think if we looked at maybe calling the recommendation, and, and that was never ado adopted actually, as we know, because they're just zoned, you know, whatever they were zoned, or 40 okay. or or for A or whatever it might be. Right. Um, but, you know, we could modify that recommendation to consider adoption of, let's call it a conservation zoning district for those types of properties that are shown on map two. And, um, you know, what the, that could entail would be a, appropriate low impacting permitted uses uh, that could be allowed, which are consistent with the features and character of the sites. You don't need to write it all down. No, I know somewhere. that. But I'm um, 
and to accommodate current uses that are on the site. So like with the Fresh Air Fund, you know, it, that type of zone could accommodate camps and recreational facilities and whatever. And Stony Hill Farm, you know, the conservation zone, they, it could all include uh, maybe sometimes by special use permits, other times by, as permitted by right, but fairly limited types of low impacting uses that would not limit what's happening there now, but right. um, would limit future development to you know low densities. And so, I think if we, you know, if we want to continue with that kind of a recommendation, we probably should flesh it out a little bit more, because I think one of the reasons it may not have happened is that nobody really understood what it was supposed to be. What was intended, or who? Yeah. Who? I guess the other question is. Who would step up and want to be part of that? So, so for example, um, I don't, I don't know everything about Stony Point and how they're, you know, funded and how they operate. Um, but I'm also aware of, uh, I'm familiar with an example up in the town of Red Hook where Montgomery Place is a historic site that was run by Historic Hudson Valley for years, and they weren't able to put all the money into it or get all the funding that they needed, they ended up going to Bard College and saying, would you please take it? And I, and I believe that there are historic sites and preserved lands that are sometimes, if they're privately run, facing some of the same issues. And yeah. so I guess there needs to be some flexibility about what are what I would call campus-style uses, like, uh, like a recreational camp or, or a college campus or uh, I don't know what other sort of open space type uses could be encouraged so that it's there's some versatility in there and, and right. not just limits. There are some other things to consider because that map too also showed um, the VA hospital at Castle Point um, as a potential. So an institutional um, type use. So it would be that that's a kind of a separate thing and mm -hmm. I, I didn't really even think about marking that down, but that would be like more of an institutional use than it right. would be a, a conservation type of use. Meaning so, it, you think like it wouldn't maybe necessarily fit there or it would? No, it would not. It I would not. Think. Got it. Definitely Got it. would not. Got it. It's a totally different kind of a place. Right. Um, anyway, I mean, that's okay. so those are all things to think about and you can take a look at, at this. The other one I just, whoop, we're already at nine, but I wanted to mention this real quickly which is on, what is my page 19, which may be a little different. I wonder um, on the conservation zone if it would help to find like examples where other communities have something. Funny you mention that. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk okay. to you more about that. Okay. Yeah, the town of Ithaca where I used to work oh, actually really? has one. And it, <laughs> it's pretty, nice pretty, pretty good that um, okay. it was pretty well thought, thought out. Right. But, um, I like it. But this is under the goal of preserve special significant environmental resources. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's way down as objective seven. Preserve existing trees where possible and require the planting of new trees when appropriate. Jonathan, you're on 19, you said? I don't know if it's your page it's 19. 18. It's 18? Yeah. So it's objective number seven? Yes, got it. So, and then the, Sentences underneath get into some of the things we do have, like the timber harvesting right. regulations. Um, but what so what our current regulations do not do is cover the situations where there are development proposals before the planning board or the town board, mm -hmm. where it's kind of assumed that a developer would not go and like clear cut their property before they get approvals. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I think under SEEKER, the State Environmental Quality Review Act, there are provisions that actually say there should be no disturbance to a site during the, until the SEEKER process is completed. But sometimes the SEEKER process is completed and there's still a little ways to go before they, the developer gets um, final approvals. And, you know, in the town of Fishkill, as in a, lo a lot of other parts of this region, there are reasons to um, try to preserve sig significant trees as much as possible, things like the Indiana bat and mm -hmm. timber rattlesnake and other habitat reasons. 
So my suggestion is that we think about recommending the researching and creating new tree preservation regulations or at least guidelines um, at minimum to address tree cutting associated with applications that are before the planning board or town board. Um, the town of Bachmanger actually has what they call a tree felling exception which was tailored specifically for the Indiana bat situation where it allows the developer to apply to the planning board to do at least limited tree clearing before they get final approvals. And so I also um, have that as a sample that right. we might be able to look at. But right. there are a lot of communities that do tree preservation regulations to a fuller extent. And that's, so I'm, I don't know that we'd be in a position to say adopt tree preservation regulations, but, no, but, to, but to research and investigate mm -hmm. the possibility of doing yeah. that would probably be the way to put it. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. That's all we need for now. For future, please butt in as soon as you want. I have, I it's hard sometimes. <laughs> it's a very conversational group. It's yeah. great. Input is valuable. And I actually have more notes to go through from prior meetings to, so there are things that were said that haven't been incorporated yet, but they will be. Any last thoughts? Uh, I got notes, but again, I'll send them to you. Okay. Just consistency. <laughs> All right. Is it the Renegade Stadium? Or is it the Duchess Stadium? The answer is the Duchess Stadium. Okay. Hmm. Now owned by. Duchess. That's important. Yeah. Very important. Um, so we will have a next meeting on the. We are 14th. scheduled for September 14th and the 28th. So Two mark meetings. your calendars. Seven o'clock. Both. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, committee. You guys did great. And gals.